Hey guys and welcome to another very exciting video. Now I'm not a big fan of reviewing anything that I haven't used for a little while, but it's been a few weeks now so it's time that we finally talk about this laptop. This is the Alienware 15R 3 It is pretty specced out and I mainly got it with the intention of using it for my filmmaking and visual effects work. In this video I obviously want to talk about the specs of this new laptop, but I also want to talk about the why, why I got this particular machine. Along the way I'm going to do a review for the Alienware 15 R3, obviously mainly in the context of using it for content creation, filmmaking and visual effects. One of the questions I get asked the most is what is the best computer for filmmaking or visual effects? What is the best laptop for After Effects, Premiere Pro, Blender, Houdini, anything like that? Now let's just be honest. If you are looking for the best bang for your buck, do not get a laptop. You will always be able to get a much more powerful computer, usually for a lot less money, if you go for a desktop machine instead of a laptop. Yet here I'm sitting in front of a laptop. However, I've had good reasons, but before we get to that, let's first look at the spec of the laptop that I actually bought. This, as I've mentioned, is the Alienware 15R 3 it's equipped with an Intel i7-7820HK, that's a quad-core CPU with 8MB of cache and if you overclock it, you can get up to a maximum clock speed of 4.4GHz. I've maxed out the memory with 32GB of RAM and I got a 1TB SSD drive for my operating systems and all my working files as well as a 1TB backup drive. For the graphics card, I went with the NVIDIA GTX 1070 which has 8GB of DDR5 RAM. And instead of the standard 1080p Full HD display, I ended up choosing the 4K version instead. Now before you ask whether this is the best computer for filmmaking and visual effects, it's a laptop. We already established that if you want the best bang for your buck, the best performance, go with a desktop machine. So this is definitely not it. Now your follow up question might be, well then is this the best laptop for filmmaking and visual effects? And in order to answer that you really need to understand why, why I bought this particular machine with the specifications that I went for. The reason I bought a laptop instead of a desktop is simply to use it as a workstation replacement. My biggest pain point is actually transferring media from my home desk setup to my office desk setup and back. So I'm constantly transferring files via USB stick, external hard drive, the internet and I'm constantly forgetting things. I'm constantly missing files that I've exported or I leaked another file that was still lying on my desktop on the other machine. There's constantly something not going right and it's creating a huge overhead for me to create these videos, my, all my tutorials for YouTube. There's a huge overhead and it's just a big pain in the butt. Therefore, I decided on getting a laptop that is going to be my one-stop shop. It has all of the files that I need to work and be productive and I can move this from home to the office to you know a weekend trip away somewhere I can take this on holiday with me though it's a little bit of a pain because of the weight but we'll get to that in a minute or I could take it on a work trip somewhere so I have the option of taking all of my work with me and staying creative no matter where I go and that that is really why I chose a laptop over a desktop now let's talk a little bit about the actual components that I've decided to put into this laptop I decided to go with the i7-7820HK which is actually the most powerful CPU that you can get in a laptop at the moment. It's not as powerful as my desktop CPUs. Even my old desktop which had an i7-4970K which is the Devil's Canyon CPU in it which is a permanent base frequency of 4 GHz is quicker than my laptop. It exports faster, it will be After Effects runs faster because After Effects mainly relies on your CPU. But it works for most things. It's not as quick as my desktop machines, but I can do all of the After Effects and Premiere Pro work that I need. The reason I went with 32 gigabytes of RAM instead of 16 is simply because I do a lot of things simultaneously and After Effects is an absolute RAM eater, so is Premiere Pro. Blender, especially when you're doing physics simulations or fluid simulations or cloth simulations, eats a whole lot of RAM and then I usually have, you know, 30, 40 tabs in Chrome open. So I do want a lot of RAM so everything kind of keeps flowing quite smoothly. Yes, you can do with 16 GB of RAM. You can also run After Effects and Premiere Pro on 8 GB of RAM, maybe even 4, though I reckon it's probably going to start struggling there. But more is always better and I figured, you know, because it's hard to upgrade a laptop after the fact, I figured I'd rather go a little bit harder and get 32 GB of RAM rather than going 16 and then maybe I want to do some work in 4K and everything slows down because the RAM can't handle it. Hard drive wise, if you haven't made the jump yet, 
do get yourself an SSD drive. It's going to make the biggest impact on the overall performance of your computer. Everything is going to run faster. Media files are going to load quicker into your program. Things are being written back to disk quicker. All of any swapping that might have to happen because you've got limited RAM, everything will just run quicker because you've got an SSD drive in there. So I'm really happy to have a one terabyte SSD drive which will hold the operating system. It also holds all of my project media files as well as stock footage elements, music, anything else that needs to be loaded into Premiere Pro or into Adobe After Effects for me to effectively do my work. One of the biggest confusions with people looking for what to get in a computer for filmmaking visual effects is that everybody thinks the graphics card is really important because, well, graphics, after Effects Premiere Pro is kind of graphics-y, right? So it kind of ties together. However, Adobe After Effects, for one, uses your graphics card very little. Most of the work in Adobe After Effects, most of the rendering of the effects, the exporting is all done on your CPU. So you need a powerful processor, not a powerful graphics card. Now, as of late, there's two technologies that have come out, which is CUDA and OpenCL. They're technologies that essentially allow your CPU to offload work onto the graphics card and the graphics card to take some of that work on and send that data back to your CPU. Some programs now are utilizing CUDA and OpenCL to leverage your graphics card, like Premiere Pro, the Mercury playback engine, actually uses CUDA. CUDA is proprietary to NVIDIA. You can only get CUDA on an NVIDIA card. OpenCL is kind of an open standard for the same type of technology, and that's usually in the ATI Radon cards, but NVIDIA cards also support OpenCL. However, if you do have it, CUDA is generally faster. So if you have the option for filmmaking and visual effects, personally at this point I'd still go for an NVIDIA graphics card. Now try to get one that has a lot of CUDA cores or processing units on the graphics card that can play part in this CPU offloading work onto the GPU and sending it back. So the more CUDA cores your graphics card has, the better it can use this technology and, and help those programs along. Tools such as Premiere Pro use CUDA, Blender uses OpenCL, Adobe After Effects also uses CUDA, but only for very limited effects. Now, over the years, more and more effects are starting to utilize the graphics card, but at this point in time, if you have the choice, strong CPU or strong graphics card, go for the strong CPU. It's going to make the biggest difference. And then if you have spare money, get yourself a strong graphics card as well. But for Adobe After Effects specifically, the CPU still weighs much more than the graphics card. Finally, and it's because I'm anticipating getting this question quite a bit is, why did you go with a 4K screen? Honestly, it doesn't make sense to go for a 4K screen on a 15 inch laptop. You're not going to be able to tell the difference and because a lot of modern software tools, even Premiere Pro can't actually deal very well with a high definition display. Things get offset, some UI elements are small, some of the functionalities don't work like zooming in and out of your Premiere Pro timeline doesn't quite work because the pixel calculations are wrong on a high definition display so it doesn't quite work and it's gonna take a few years for all of that to catch up. Also, a 4K display is a bigger drain on your battery and obviously on your graphics card because there's more pixels to render out. The reason I did go with a 4K display is simply for screen recording. Whenever I screen record a tutorial, be that in After Effects, Premiere Pro, Blender or any other program, I usually have the program windowed so it's a little bit smaller. If I record the whole thing on a 4K screen, I can blow this out, I can zoom in and out of the interface and everything stays nice and sharp. So screen recording is literally the only reason I got a 4K display. I know I'm paying for it in terms of the performance of the graphics card and battery life and other things, but I really wanted to leave that option open to get some really high quality tutorials recorded and you know, hopefully it makes a difference to someone out there in the end. One last question I want to preemptively answer before I get to talking about what I love and don't love about this laptop is, why didn't you go with Asus or Lenovo or Apple, MSI, Razer, Microsoft, any of the other big brands that do create really powerful gaming laptops? Now for me, there were two main reasons why I ended up going with the Alienware. The first one is customizability. I live out in Australia and the only laptop where I feel I can fully customize it, well within limits, but to my liking is the Alienware laptops from Dell. Razer, Lenovo, Apple, MSI, all of them sell kind of pre-packaged laptops. The ones I can get in Australia, they all being sold in shops as is. The max I've seen for most of the laptops is 16 gigabytes of RAM. I also couldn't upgrade a lot of the CPUs to the 7820HK that I actually wanted. So I have limited options with some of the other brands because they're all overseas and they don't have a way to allow me to customize all of them. The second reason I went with Alienware is support and warranty. 
This laptop was expensive. It cost me just over $5,000, which is a huge investment in a computer. However, a lot of big brands surprisingly don't actually offer much of service around warranty and you know repairs, returns, anything like that. If I had bought a Razer Stealth Pro, which was another machine I was looking at because I like the style a little bit better, I could get it spec'd out from the US, but I would only get it with a one year warranty. I can extend that to two years at most, but it's a back to base warranty. So I'd have to send it back from Australia to America to get it repaired if anything ever goes wrong. So that was a big no-go. The only company that actually offers really good service within Australia is Dell and Dell only sells Alienware. So with Dell, I actually have three years on-site service. So if something goes wrong, I can literally call them up. I'll get a Dell technician rock up at my place and try to fix the problem. If they can't fix it, they'll get me a replacement laptop or temporary replacement while they fix this one. So I'm always covered. And because it's for three years full service, and even though this laptop was $5,000, I'm actually spreading that cost out over three years because I've kind of decided for the next three years, I'm not going to buy a new computer or anything for a computer. I'm just going to use this laptop. That's what it's for. But I need it to last me three years. So I need to have good support. On top of that, through Dell, I was actually able to add three years of accidental damage cover to the laptop. So if something stupid goes wrong because I'm going to move from my home to the office and back and forth quite a bit. If I accidentally drop it, I'll spill some coffee on it. I'll do something stupid, which obviously I'm not going to try to, but if it does happen, it is covered for three years. So if anything ever goes wrong, I can get it fixed. And that's one of the main things that I could not get from any of the other brands. And now, because I've already used this laptop for a bit over a month now, let's talk about what's great and what's not so great about it. Let's talk about the great things first. Packaging was ace, unpacking it was super easy and setting it up was just absolutely smooth. Didn't take too long, 20 minutes and was up and running, registered the device with Alienware and it was good to go. Also really liked that the laptop came with minimal bloatware. There's like an Alienware FX which allows me to control all of the lighting. There's a killer control center which I don't actually gonna use so I'm kind of shutting that down. There's a Dell support assistant and like one or two other programs but that's pretty much it. I really like the keyboard and the trackpad, especially the trackpad, which feels a little bit like a glass surface, a bit like the MacBook Pro. It's really nice and smooth, very, very responsive. Feels much better than some of the plasticky trackpads I've used on some other laptops before. So just using it without an external mouse or keyboard or anything like that, it's actually really nice to use. The Alienware 15 does get a little bit noisy under load, but it's actually not too bad. A MacBook Pro will actually get much noisier, especially when you're exporting a video. It sounds like a little spaceship lifting off. So the Alienware does get noisy at times under load, sometimes when there's absolutely nothing going on at all, and I don't quite know why. But all of the noise levels are, you know, within reasonable limits. I do like the 4K screen. It is pretty bright at 300 nits, though if you're out in the sun, it's a little bit reflective and not quite that easy to use. But most of the time, you know, I'm an IT nerd. Most of the time, I'm indoors anyway. And from that, let's slide right into what I don't quite like about this laptop. Obviously, the screen is not super bright. It's a little bit reflective, especially if you're out in the sun. And because it's a laptop, and I talked about this already, it's not as powerful as a desktop. It's definitely slower than even my older desktop on the 4970K Devil's Canyon CPU. And it's just the fact that it's a laptop. It gets hotter. It doesn't perform quite as well. And this is uh, this is something you're going to have to live with. And of course, in case you haven't noticed yet, the Alienware 15 is an absolute beast. It's big and heavy. The laptop itself weighs 3.5 kilos. And because you're probably getting around about four-ish hours out of the Alienware 15, if you're doing heavy video editing or visual effects, you'll need to bring a charger. And this is the brick of a charger, say 240 watts power supply, which by itself weighs, I think it's around about 800 grams. So you're going to have to add that on top of the three and a half of the Alienware laptop. So together, you're looking at almost four and a half kilos. But overall, I'm really happy with the Alienware 15. I can do all of my filmmaking and visual effects on it. I don't have to transfer files anymore. So my main pain points are resolved, even if it is not quite as powerful as my desktop machine. I love the lighting on the side, the style, the build quality is really great. It's heavy, so it's definitely a portable workstation rather than a laptop, but it does exactly what I need it to be. And I'm really happy that I got it. Now, whether it is the best laptop for you, that is something that only you can answer. Obviously, there's different variations you can get of this machine as well. And there's a tons of other brands that you can look at. And I do think I'm going to make a separate video just talking about computer part considerations so that you can apply that whether you're getting a desktop or a laptop. Hopefully, this video gave you a little bit of insight already. But now, let's wrap this up. 
If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button. And as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.